Uh, welcome to all of you in this lecture series on corrosion in refinery. Uh, in the last lecture, we discussed about uh, corrosion in overhead section of primary units, uh, namely in crude distillation units and vacuum distillation units. And today, we are going to discuss about uh, overhead corrosion in secondary units, um, mainly in FCC units, delayed cooker units or sour water stripper units. And what happens in the overhead section of these units, uh, ammonia gas reacts with H2S and forms ammonium bisulfide. And ammonium bisulfide causes lots of corrosion, so it is also called ammonium bisulfide corrosion. And these ammonium bisulfide corrosion take place not only in the overhead section of some secondary units, but it also takes place in the reactor affluent system of hydro processing units, I mean hydro treating units or hydro cracker units. It may also take place in the amine uh, regenerated overhead system. So we are going to discuss about ammonium bisulfide corrosion and the discussion will be equally valid for overhead section of some uh, units as well as uh, reactor affluents of hydro processing units. So let us start our discussion. Actually what happened uh, in hydro processing units or CAT uh, FCC units or delayed cooker units, uh, basically the feed contains sulfur and nitrogen compounds and during the reaction uh, nitrogen compounds convert into ammonia, hydrogen cyanide or other nitrogen compound and similarly uh, sulfur compounds convert into H2S and other sulfur compounds and these being lighter they go into overhead section of the column or into the reactor affluent system in hydro processing units and what happened uh, ammonia react with H2S ammonia gas react with H2S gas and produce ammonium bisulfide and uh, this may be the reaction this is an equilibrium reaction and we last in the last lecture we discuss about uh, one equilibrium reaction where ammonia gas react with HCl and produces ammonium chloride and we discuss at length about the equilibrium uh, constant Kp and its dependence on temperature and what we found that uh, when temperature increases Kp also increases or vice versa I mean when Kp increases the temperature at which that equilibrium will exist will also increase. So what happened? Uh, if my Kp is higher, so it means at higher temperature this ammonium bisulfide salt, salt dep uh, deposition will take place. I mean it will uh, sublime out from gas phase to uh, solid phase at higher temperature and if Kp value is low then this sublimation will take place at lower temperature. So because of that reason it is written as crystallization of ammonium bisulfide is a function of Kp and temperature. Uh, it can be also seen in this uh, graph. Uh, here you can see that this uh, Kp is on y axis and an x axis temperature is there. So if Kp value is suppose 10 to the power minus uh, sorry 10 to the power 3 so s salt deposition temperature is uh, comes roughly around 40 degrees Celsius if it means that if temperature is above 40 degrees Celsius there won't be any salt deposition take place but if my Kp value is 10 to the power 5 then salt deposition temperature may come roughly around 75 degrees Celsius it means you now need to maintain temperature much higher to avoid salt deposition if my Kp is higher and Kp will be higher if my partial pressure of ammonia and H2S it will be higher. So let us understand uh, in this uh, by taking this example of FCC main fractionator column. Uh, basically suppose uh, FCC feed contains nitrogen and sulfur compound which has been converted into ammonia and H2S in the reactor and that ammonia and H2S has uh, gone through uh, I mean uh, has come into the main fractionator column and exit from the top of the column yeah, and enters into the overhead section I mean in this section. Now suppose based on the feed composition Kp is turned out to be such that uh, that 
uh, ammonium bisulfide salt deposition temperature turn out to be say uh, around uh, 80 degrees Celsius just a rough estimation for qualitative dis uh, discussion and suppose this uh, uh, overhead temperature of main fractionated column of FCC is uh, 120 degrees Celsius so what does it mean is uh, since temperature is higher here then ammonia gas and H2S gas will remain in gaseous phase there won't be any salt deposition but when it uh, entered into the air fin cooler temperature will go down and when temperature go goes below 80 degrees Celsius uh, salt deposition will take place in the tube of air fin cooler okay now this may be the one case when KP is maybe a smaller if kp is higher i mean if heat is containing nitrogen and sulfur at high amount then it may be possible that uh, uh, salt deposition temperature may turns out to be 120 degrees celsius and then in that case salt deposition may take place in this section also and if feed is containing even higher amount of nitrogen or sulfur then salt deposition may take place in the overhead i mean in the top section of the column also so basically kp uh, and uh, the temperature is interrelated so let us take an example of this uh, 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 e uh, example such that this uh, salt deposition uh, take place in air fin cooler only in that case what happened uh, the tubes in which salt deposition has been has taken place uh, what will happen that tube will foul because of this salt, salt deposition and if some water vapor has also been uh, trapped in that foulings so what will happen under deposit corrosion will take place about which we have already discussed when we were discussing about crevice corrosion and it causes highly localized corrosion which is called pitting corrosion uh, i mean which forms pit so that is highly problematic and another problem is since that tube will foul so to compensate the mass balance of the fluid the flow velocity in other tubes will increase and when the flow velocity in other tubes will increase so what will happen erosion corrosion will take place in that other section so be, uh, because of that reason uh, here it is written that the deposits will cause fouling in heat exchanger tubes under deposit corrosion and also causes poor flow distribution so these were all about when uh, sublimation sublime out take place and solid deposition will take place now suppose uh, my uh, kp value was low enough and uh, uh, such that uh, uh, the temperature at which uh, salt deposition is taking place is lower than the water dew point well, i mean water uh, suppose water is water dew points uh, dew point uh, come out to be suppose uh, uh, say 80 degrees Celsius and my salt deposition to, uh, temperature come out to be say 70 degrees Celsius so what will happen uh, uh, this uh, in this section first what will happen water vapor will condense out and there will be a coarse phase or it may also be possible that KP value was enough and we have added water to avoid this salt deposition so in that case also, also there will be water vapor and once uh, uh, water i mean there will be water and once there will be water we are now in the totally different realm we 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 cannot analyze the system in that chemical equilibrium we need to discuss about ionic equilibrium we are now in the realm of ionic equilibrium so what will happen once this water will be available there what will happen ammonia gas or h2s gas will dissolve in that water and that dissolution will depend on the pressure and temperature if pressure is high uh, solubility of gas will be high if temperature is low solubility of gas will be uh, high i mean that we all understand so what will happen that ammonia gas will dissolve in the water and this ion will form similarly h2s gas will dissolve and it dissociate into h plus and hs minus and similarly hs minus further dissociate into h plus plus s2 minus uh, it is written wrongly here it should be s2 minus so ultimately we get these ions into the solution 
I mean, there won't be uh, ammonium bisulfide, rather these ions will be there. So what happened? Uh, when this ion formed, so water contains these ions and what we found that these ions uh, also causes corrosion. So we have tried to solve one problem by injecting water or just we uh, uh, suppose we are just trying to uh, investigate what will happen if uh, kp is lowered uh, in that case also ammonium uh, plus H ammonium ion and hs minus ion will form and this hs minus uh, ion and ammonium uh, uh, hs minus ion will also cause corrosion and that is called um, I mean, because of that reason, it is called, it is written here. It produces a corrosive solution of ammonium bisulfide. And how it is so? Actually, what will happen? Uh, as usual, iron will go for anodic reaction, and HS minus will go for cathodic reaction. It seems very unusual, but it is written in uh, literature. HS minus will and uh, will accept electron, and this sulfide and will form, and ultimately this overall reaction will take place so this should be written as H2 gas so basically uh, we have tried to solve one problem suppose uh, uh, by adding water suppose to avoid salt deposition but due to water formation or water addition we have created another problem we have created a corrosive solution in nature and that will also cause corrosion so this is the problem here so what is the remedy for this so what we found here uh, on in literature that this ammonium bisulfide is corrosive only when it is concentrated in nature if it is dilute in uh, uh, dilute in that case it is not corrosive and this statement is true but it is not 100% true true what is the 100% true statement is is that uh, corrosion of ammonium bisulfide depends on composition that whether it is uh, diluted or concentrated always as well as it also depend on the flow velocity so what I found in the literature given literature uh, this figure may not be true in your units but uh, these are uh, just indicative for qualitative discussion so what I found that uh, in carbon steel when ammonium bisulfide concentration remains below 2 weight percent there won't be any corrosion take place and when ammonium bisulfide concentration increases 2 weight percent then corrosion rate increases uh, and as velocity increases I mean corrosion will take place and corrosion rate will be higher if vel uh, fluid velocity is higher if corrosion rate will be low, uh, smaller with fluid velocity is uh, smaller so generally if fluid velocity is greater than 6.8 meter per second then severe corrosion may take place and what the third statement here it is uh, when pH rises above 9 now how pH influence this corrosion is see basically suppose uh, it is written that ammonium bisulfide corrosion uh, will depend on concentration and it may be possible uh, it may be difficult to measure the concentration of ammonium bisulfide in reactor affluent system or overhead system so it is easier to uh, measure pH so what happen when pH will be higher I mean ammonia uh, concentration will be higher and generally um, since ammonia is more polar than H2S and water is also polar and we know that uh, like diesel likes so according to that logic solubility of ammonia is higher compared to H2S solubility so generally ammonia's solubility will be much higher and because of that reason pH will mostly decided by ammonia concentration though in some cases if feed contains very less amount of nitrogen and uh, very high amount of sulfur in that case pH may be decided uh, by sulfur but in general pH will be decided by ammonia so if pH is higher it means ammonia concentration is high so OH minus concentration will also be high and this OH minus will react with H plus ion so these reaction will move into forward direction so HS minus concentration will also goes high so if pH will be high so concentration will also high of HS minus and so corrosion will high so because of that reason it is written written that uh, 
Ammonium bisulfide corrosion will take place if concentration exceeds 28 percent or pH rises above 9 percent. So generally when pH rises above 9, concentration also rises. And that why, uh, that's why it is also called alkaline sour water corrosion. I mean if pH is very low then the, this corrosion uh, usually do not take place because in that case concentration of ammonium bisulfide will be much smaller. Now this is about uh, above 2 weight percent and what we found that when concentration increases 8 weight percent I mean above 8 weight percent then this corrosion will take place even under static condition. So below 2 weight percent there won't be any problem. 2 to 8 percent, 2 to 8 percent corrosion will take place, but it depends on the velocity of fluid. Uh, if it is lower velocity, then there won't be any problem. But if the concentration goes above 8 weight percent, in that case, corrosion will take place even under static condition. So this is the key. Okay. So what is recommended? Uh, recommended here is that. Uh, uh, Ammonium bisulfide concentration should be less than 8 weight percent and fluid velocity should be uh, less than 3 meter per second. So this is okay but how to reduce concentration? So we can reduce concentration by water washing. If we add more amount of water concentration will go down and because of that reason in the ammonium bisulfide uh, corrosion the one way to control that corrosion is water washing. That is very important. We do water washing to avoid salt deposition and we also do I mean we add sufficient amount of water to reduce the concentration of ammonium bisulfide to avoid ammonium bisulfide corrosion but here is another problem if you add more than required amount of water what will happen erosion corrosion will take place so we need to be very optimum here now if ammonium bisulfide corrosion is taking place what will form iron sulfide will form and hydrogen gas will form and we have learned that uh, iron sulfide uh, is generally uh, deposit on the material and forms a passive layer so what will happen ammonium bisulfide seems to be a self terminating because of this passive layer formation so rate of corrosion should go down and that that seems one favorable things but but the problem has not been stated completely. What will happen? Generally, what happened in the FCC reactor? Uh, carbon monoxide react with ammonia and form HCN, and this HCN react with uh, ammonia and produces ammonium cyanide, and which dissolve into when it uh, uh, into water and produces cyanide. Ion. Now, this cyanide ion react with iron sulfide and produces ferrocyanide. Now this ferrocyanide solubility of uh, solubility in water is very high, so it forms a soluble. So it will be soluble, and so there won't be any uh, passive layer formation. So corrosion will continue. There won't be. It won't remain self-terminating. So this is one problem when cyanide is there. Another problem would be then what to happen? We have learned that cyanide is cathodic poison in nature. So if cyanide is there and H2S I mean sulfide is also cathodic poison. So if uh, combination of H2S with cyanide so what will happen they won't allow two hydrogen atom adsorb hydrogen atom to combine and form hydrogen gas. So the only way left for hydrogen atoms to enter into the metals and once it enters it causes hydrogen blistering hydrogen embrittlement and because of that sulfide stress corrosion cracking hydrogen induced cracking so all these problems uh, may may be uh, because of this uh, cyanide ion. so how to re uh, solve this problem so we'll discuss about it when we discuss about how to control ammonium bisulfide corrosion but before uh, we discuss that uh, let's let us discuss about characteristic of ammonium bisulfide corrosion Basically, uh, uh, basically, ammonium bisulfide corrosion is highly localized in nature. In a straight portion of pipe, it forms a spiral gouging, and in the elbows, uh, due to erosion corrosion, uh, cracking may, uh, uh, I mean, leak may take place. Also, fouling we have already discussed about, and <coughs> uh, 
the places where this take place is uh, reactor affluent uh, uh, air fin coolers or in the case of FCC overhead sections uh, or delayed cooker unit also overhead section so you can see this this is the typical characteristic of ammonium bisulfide corrosion see this is a spiral gouging here is similarly at bend this leak is taking place due to erosion corrosion so now how to control this uh, ammonium bisulfide corrosion uh, there are several important points the, uh, when we uh, considered about uh, how to control this uh, corrosion the one important point is that the uh, reflux temperature uh, should be above 40 degrees Celsius uh, because uh, what happened uh, if reflux temperature goes very low so where it enters into the main column so what will happen uh, the temperature at that section may go very down and uh, this sub uh, th this dissolting may take place on the uh, trays of main column and so we should uh, maintain this temperature above another important point is that we should uh, uh, yeah, we should inject wash water in adequate amount and we have already discussed about why it is so uh, because uh, uh, this uh, uh, because this uh, corrosion is basically increases corrosion rate increases when concentration of ammonium bisulfide goes very high so adequate wash water injection rate is required and generally what we find that uh, for hydro processing units generally uh, what was a uh, 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 wash water rate usually turns out to be five to seven percent of the feed uh, in terms of volume percent and in that case if you are adding in, the, in that amount then generally we found that ABS concentration below 5 feet percent so corrosion rate will be uh, controlled uh, another important point is where you are adding wash water because the play, uh, point at which water washer should inject at least 25 percent of unvaporized water should remain there I mean if you are adding too early then lots and most of the water will vaporize and form a steam and uh, uh, depending on the KP value of this ammonium bisulfide uh, or even in some cases ammonium chloride may form because SCL may also be there so depending on their KP values uh, they make uh, dissolved out uh, I mean sublime out at higher temperature uh, uh, of water dew point so even a steam could not condense and before that uh, this uh, uh, salt formation may take place and because of that reason we should add the water where at least 25% of on vaporized water remain at the system Similarly, we should uh, maintain the concentration of ABS below 88% because we have already seen that if concentration goes above 88% then uh, even uh, our system is uh, stagnant, I mean flow velocity is zero, then also corrosion will take place. So that is very important point. Another important point is wash water should be free from contaminants. I mean wash water should not contain chloride and, and we have already discussed about this uh, 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 pitting corrosion that uh, pitting corrosion generally occurs uh, and uh, highly localized corrosion uh, when uh, system contains halide ions so there will be problem with chloride ions similarly chloride ion may form ammonium chloride and ammonium chloride usually what we find is that ammonium chloride uh, dissolving at uh, out temperature is much higher than ammonium bisulfide it may be Means though it depend on KP and based on higher KP it may dissolve at out at much higher temperature maybe at 200 degrees Celsius also so that is very important to understand that wash water should not contain chloride and also wash water should not contain cyanide and uh, about which we have already discussed that this cyanide and uh, will destroy this passive layer so that is the problem also wash water should not contain oxygen and generally what we found that in literature that oxygen level in the wash water should be below 20 parts per billion so what oxygen does is one is very important that uh, we know that in the when we discuss about the corrosion mechanism of crevice corrosion and pitting corrosion so what we find that in that case that uh, oxygen and chloride and uh, 
is generally or any halide and generally required for that corrosion mechanism so the oxygen may be responsible th for that localized corrosion another is what it does is oxygen is because it is a strong oxidizer it react with ammonium bisulfide and it form elemental sulfur and this elemental sulfur usually remains stable at low ph and so uh, so since it is solid form at uh, in the that condition so it may it cause fouling and also corrosion in the sour water system however if our ph goes high then this reaction reverse back and this sulfur react with ammonia with ammonium bisulfide and it forms ammonium polysulfide and ammonium polysulfide act as corrosion inhibitor so uh, how uh, i will discuss in a few minutes but uh, uh, that is clear that if ph goes above it then this uh, uh, so uh, uh, elemental sulfur formation won't be a problem but if ph goes below then this is a big problem now uh, there is another important point is what it is written is that uniform distribution of wash water is required and so do, uh, injection should be through quills or a spray nozzles uh, because uh, otherwise what happen it may be possible that uh, at some places wash water is not there and their salting may take place Another important point is balance header configuration is required. And what is what is balance header configuration? Uh, see, this is a balance header configuration. Uh, what you find that this uh, header is of 10 inch and which is divided into two parts of 8 inch and further divided into 6 inch and further divided into 4 inch like this. And division is such that if you take a mirror, then it will like a mirror image. And why it is done so? because uh, if you have divided into eight lines uh, eight four inch lines directly from 10 inch so what may be possible that in the first two lines velocity may go high and the last two lines um, which are of four inch line it may be possible that velocity goes uh, low uh, so in that case there may be fouling in that last lines and there may be erosion corrosion at the first two lines because of high velocity because of that reason it is always divided into two so that the equal flow could be maintained in each section uh, however in some cases you may find that it may be divided into four four uh, uh, line and then may further divide into two and two so in that case they usually provide rotameter to uh, monitor that they are uh, uh, at least e equal flow is uh, of what uh, water is going into all these lines so th that is very important uh, so uh, uh, balance head configuration is important uh, another uh, is that design should avoid the u bend otherwise erosion corrosion will take place and another important point is uh, that this uh, velocity of process stream should maintain within 3 to 6 meter per second low velocity salting uh, uh, and high ve velocity again this erosion corrosion it may be problem so that we should keep in mind and uh, another these two points we will discuss when we will discuss about in abscessy in particular so so this is a typical view of this overhead uh, balance header design now uh, one another way is to control this ammonium um, bisulfide corrosion is to choose the material wisely and uh, uh, see uh, uh, what you see in this graph is that on y axis it is corrosion rate and on x axis it is ammonium bisulfide concentration and what you find is uh, that uh, uh, when he when we use carbon steel then corrosion rate usually increases with ammonium bisulfide concentration and above 38 percent concentration it goes uh, it increases very sharply but for austenitic stainless steel like for 316 ss uh, this uh, usually remain very negligible up to 38 uh, percent so it, because of that reason uh, in many of the cases where uh, co control of ammonium bisulfide is very critical in that case mm, they usually use ss 321 or ss 360 and if 
apart from this that if it is very it it is uh, turning out to be very difficult to control ammonium bisulfide corrosion then we find that titanium alloy are the most resistant in nature in ammonium bisulfide corrosion so that is about material selection now this is a typical example of any hydro treating unit and what you find that this uh, um, uh, water washing is injected just upstream of the reactor air fin coolers uh, uh, reactor affluent air fin coolers uh, that is also called REAC and these are the system where ammonium bisulfide corrosion may take place so because of that reason water washing has been done now let us talk about ammonium bisulfide corrosion in FCC in general uh, FCC in uh, particular now we have seen that in FCC reactor hydrogen cyanide may form and that creates a problem that because it uh, destroys the passive layer and because of that in water was we add ammonium polysulfide now what is a ammonium polysulfide is uh, see the polysulfide is a molecule which contains several sulfur atoms like this is a polysulfide which is in the middle of the molecules and connected to uh, at the last two uh, uh, elements uh, uh, that, that m may be sodium or ammonium so it could be sodium polysulfide or ammonium polysulfide ammonium polysulfide is usually uh, more popular in nature now what ammonium polysulfide, polysulfide does is uh, it basically stabilizes the iron sulfide passive film and how it does is it basically react with iron poly, uh, iron sulfide and it form uh, transform into iron polysulfide and iron polysulfide is found to be more resistant to uh, for the corrosion uh, compared to the iron sulfide film this is the one uh, uh, one important role of this ammonium polysulfide and another is is that what it does is polysulfide react with cyanide and, and produces thiocyanate and thiocyanate is not a problem it is it, it dissolve into the solution and so there won't be a problem so to, uh, to be certain that this all cyanide and has been treated uh, we should add excess amount of polysulfide and generally how it we could recognize that uh, excess amount of polysulfide is dosing we could uh, detect by the color of uh, uh, sour water uh, but generally it turns out to be slightly yellow in nature because this because of this sulfur so uh, based on that we should dose ammonium polysulfide in the FCC uh, over its section now there are some problem with also ammonium polysulfide the one problem is that at lower pH uh, what happened this ammonium polysulfide uh, decompose into ammonia H2S and sulfur elemental sulfur and we have already seen that the problem with elemental sulfur H2S is again a problem we have seen that it causes hydrogen blistering and all those problems so because of that reason if we, we are using ammonium polysulfide then pH should be above it also if you see this equilibrium reaction closely then you may see that this um, reaction will go into forward direction if this ammonia concentration goes low I mean when pH goes low and also if this reaction may go into forward direction if this ammonium polysulfide concentration goes very high and because of that reason we should increase uh, we should inject uh, ammonium polysulfide in excess around 10 to 50 ppm uh, so that every cyanide ion will be treated but we should not increase our concentration above 30 ppm otherwise what will happen this polysulfide will decompose and it will cause problem another important point about this ammonium polysulfide is that their concentrated solution are usually red and dilute solution are usually yellow they are unstable at low pH we have already discussed uh, discussed and another problem is, is that they are very susceptible to oxidation and because of that reason if they are exposed to air they oxidize and form thiosulfate and sulfate and neither of which forms desired thiocyanate that is the problem and th that can be recognized is that uh, because of this oxidation they turn out from red uh, or yellow to colorless and which suggests that this ammonium polysulfide has been oxidized so we should avoid this oxidation and because of that reason polysulfide uh, generally is blanketed with hydrocarbon to prevent order or oxygen combination so that is that was all about ammonium polysulfide now based on that discussion what we understand is uh, this uh, 
what were, water was uh, in the FCC overhead system, uh, the pH should be controlled very strictly. I mean, if your pH goes below it, it then there is a problem of ammonium polysulfide decomposition. And if you your pH goes above 9, then we have already discussed about that concentration of um, ammonium polysulfide will be high and I mean rate of corrosion will also be high. So uh, that is very clear that in FCC overhead system we should usually control and that may be mm, the value may be different for different unit but uh, we are talking about a general uh, qualitative discussion. So we should uh, maintain our pH in the range of 8 to 9 and uh, what we find that uh, are so uh, the question com comes how we could in uh, maintain this uh, pH in this range. So as I have, I have already discussed that ammonia is more polar in nature and because of that reason ammonia is more soluble compared to hydrogen sulfide or hydrogen cyanide. So basically they are they, they present in that uh, uh, system generally in higher concentration. So if it contain a lot of nitrogen in that case pH may go above 9 and in that case what we should do is uh, we should increase the w water washing rate so that the concentration of ammonia goes low and uh, pH will go reduce and will come into this range. On the contrary, if the feed contains low nitrogen then pH may go below it and in that case we should decrease the water wash rate so that the concentration of ammonia goes high and pH will go back into this range. However, if the feed concentration contains high amount of H2S and HCN because of uh, high sulfur in the feed then also pH may go below 8 but in that case also uh, instead of uh, uh, can, uh, in that case we should decrease the water wash rate and we should uh, what we should do is uh, we should uh, uh, we should throw out these uh, impurities I mean cyanide and H H2S and how we can do, do, do this uh, see uh, this is a typical example of this water wash circuit for example this is the overhead reflux term and this is the compressor this is two, two stage weight gas compressor so what usually done is the from the boot of uh, overhead condenser uh, this sour water is uh, is doses in the overhead circuit as well as in the first stage discharge and some sour water has been discarded into the sour water stripper unit so if i mean concentration of sulfide and cyanide and goes high in that case we should increase this slip stream so that the concentration remain at the low, lower per, lowest possible uh, level so that's why it is written that if concentration of H2S and HCN increases, so we should increase slip stream more and we should decrease the water wash rate. Now one Im another important point for FCC uh, that uh, see as we know that the, uh, the solubility of gases generally increases at higher pressure and because of that reason corrosive agent like H2S HCN ammonia concentrate at higher pressure point in FCC I mean it the at the discharge of uh, first stage and second stage of WGC and because of that reason uh, we need to add water at that places so you can see that we have added at the first stage discharge and similarly at the second stage discharge with APS as a corrosion inhibitor here. Now this is the one way of water washing in FCC. Uh, there could be another way and uh, this is this is called forward cascading. Uh, the water is going from here then it is going from uh, first stage condenser outlet and the, the after this cooler the second stage it uh, the water has been pumped there would be a uh, there one pump is required because it is at higher pressure compared to this so again further has been added here so uh, this is the one way there is another way uh, what is called backward cascading in that only one pump will be required in that case there is a pump and the water is will be first doses in the second stage discharge 
and it goes into the high pressure separator and their pressure will be high so without any need of pump it can be go into the faucet state discharge similarly faucet state discharge pressure will be higher compared to overhead so without any need of pump it can go into the overhead but there is a problem because of these uh, uh, cascading the sinusoidal will go back into the system continuously so this though it uses only uh, one pump uh, it is uh, uh, it is uh, generally avoided forward cascading is more popular in nature so what we understand based on this discussion that water washing is a solution of not only desalting uh, i mean so, so, uh, uh, a solution of falling uh, problem uh, or corrosion problem that i mean water washing serving lots many uh, purpose one is it avoided salting uh, 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 under deposit corrosion also it avoided uh, uh, ammonium bisulfide corrosion because of uh, high concentration also it is a, a using as a slip stream by using as a slip stream uh, they are just just throwing out the cyanide ions and all those things so that is very important in nature uh, and in even in amine unit water washing may throw out the heat stable salts so there are many important purposes of water washing in this system so we are going to stop here uh, and uh, uh, thank you for watching this video we will discuss in the next part about uh, 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 about this uh, alkaline system corrosion we have discussed until now about this uh, acidic and oxygen mediums corrosion so we will discuss about corrosion due to caustic amine and in boiler how corrosion take place